as my, my sister friend told me before beginning, uh, everything that I say that's inspirational, that you benefit from, that's coming from Allah Salah Ta'ala, everything else that's crap is coming from me. So forgive me. I took my Shahada officially on my wedding day and I remember the experience. I had been introduced to Islam uh, for many years and it was such an emotional experience. It was, subhanAllah, I was surrounded by family, I was surrounded by friends. I just really connected and then reality set in. And I realized to grow closer to Allah Sarah Ta'ala, I needed to address my former sense of self. I really needed to address my former life. Because you see, I'm a former prostitute. Since I was 11 years old, I've been struggling with eating disorders. I've been struggling with depression. I've been struggling with the concept of love. And today I stand in front of you as a survivor, almost. Because my path to Islam was lonely, but my path after was lonelier because I was alone. And I couldn't connect to my former friends, my former lifestyle, but I couldn't connect to my new ones either because I was ashamed of where I came from and I was ashamed with the way that I lived my life before. And I couldn't, I didn't want to be shunned from this community. So years later, I decided to write my revert story. I was going to write my story and I was going to share my experiences. And inshallah, somebody could benefit, maybe somebody could comment, that was okay. And I wanted to be anonymous because I was afraid to be judged. The feedback that I received from publishing my revert story um, and my former experiences and my experiences coming to Islam, uh, I received feedback that was both positive and negative. Um, but two things really puzzled me. And the first that puzzled me was that not one single person asked me how was I doing. They didn't ask how I was, I was doing. They didn't ask if I was still struggling, if I was still having these feelings of guilt. And then the second thing that puzzled me was I started to receive these emails and I received one email and another email and followed by many more other emails by Muslim women, young Muslim women who were born into Islam, who were converts to Islam, who had these same problems that I was struggling with, these feelings of loneliness and isolation. And they didn't have anybody to talk about because they were afraid to be shunned from the community. What I decided to do, I started to research more into the concept of Islamic psychiatry. And I started to research into the concept of Nasfayat. And Nasfayat provides this understanding of human beings because it looks at that we are made up of our nafs, which is our self, and our ruh, which is our soul. So the ruh, which is our soul, that's our existence. And it is perfect and it is limitless. And the nafs, contrastingly, these, these seven of them, they reflect our reality and they're imperfect and they're fluid. And we can combine the nafs and the ruh and when we combine them, when we analyze them, there's room for purity and there's room for growth. So the first one is the commanding self. And this one is childish. It's childish and it's egotistical. It lacks, it lacks introspection and it's me, 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 me. The next one is the blaming self. And this one has that conscious aspect and it causes us to be guilty. It causes us this dis defensiveness. The next one is the inspired self. And this one, it lacks consciousness. It's very creative, it's very liberal, but it has no discipline. It has no structure. The following one is the contained self. It's the certain self. It's loyal to the path of worship and it remembers Allah Salah Ta'ala. The following one is the content self and it's content in difficulty or in ease. It sees Allah Salah Ta'ala in every circumstance and accepts His presence. The next one is the self that is pleased with everything and contentment guides their actions. They're harmonious with their environment as you can see. And the last one, the one of course that we strive to be is the complete self. And what is the complete self but the level of the Prophet Salah? 
living with divine love, living with purpose. So to become this healed person, to become a complete person, we have to look at our seven dynamics of self and we have to look at our roof. And one way to do that is by writing, because writing causes us to posit our actions. It causes us to think and to reflect and to describe our transformation. And only through reflection can we engage in healing. What me and, and a couple other women have decided to do was to create this space called Muslim Nesfayet, which is an online community that provides a supportive and non-judgmental community and we call it the whole person approach to healing because that's really what it is is you're looking at the whole person approach and you're wondering why do we act the way that we do what causes us to act to the way that we do and how do we want to be like it's anonymous and it's safe and women write their goals their inspirations their problems their past their journeys all of that and we found that this really provides others with motivation and advice and it causes them to not feel so alone and to not feel so alienated. So two years, I came to Islam, I took my official Shahada and I came crawling and I was hurting and I was lonely and my story is not unique. My story is the story that's felt by millions of other Muslim women Muslim women who struggle with depression, who struggle with love, who struggle with eating disorders and self-harm and substance abuse. And they're born Muslim and they're Muslim converts and they're people that have not come to Islam because they're fearful of being alone. We are able to grow when we reflect. We are able to grow when we are able to see this transformation, to be documenting where we came from to where we want to go and only through this way can we truly grow so this is a solution to silence